Hi, I'm Sam Crawford, service technician here at Intellimeter Canada. And on behalf of Intellimeter, I'd like to welcome you to our video training series. In this particular video, we are going to be demonstrating the installation process for the iMeter MF3. But before we get started with the install, let's just take a quick moment to go over some of the properties of the components that you should have received. So in your package, you should have received the iMeter MF3 itself, depending on what was purchased, possibly an automation module, which would be inserted in this area here. You should have a set of CTs, complete with labels, both on the CT side and the CT lead. And lastly, our CT programming USB dongle. This tells the meter which type of CTs are being used with it. Take a quick moment to go over your paperwork and make sure that the number on the USB dongle matches the rating of the CTs. This information can be found on either your packing slip, shop drawings, or other paperwork provided. So before we install the CTs, let's just take a quick moment to go over some of the properties of the CTs themselves in relation to the MF3 meter. Now the MF3 meter is capable of single phase, two phase, and three phase metering for one metering point. That being said, each CT is designated for a certain phase. CT1 is for phase A or line one. CT2 is for phase B or line two. And CT3 is for phase C or line three. Note the direction arrow on the CTs. This arrow must point in the same direction as the flow of current. So now that we know what each CT is for, let's go ahead and install the CTs. Now keep in mind that here we have built a mock-up panel for the sake of this demonstration video. In real life application, you would want to ensure that any electrical equipment or panel is locked off before opening and performing any work. If work must be performed on a live electrical panel or equipment, please ensure that you are wearing the appropriate protective gear such as an arc flash suit, complete with helmet and gloves. So to do this test, we are going to have to first energize the panel and temporarily turn all the breakers to their on positions. We are then going to take a multimeter, set it to check for alternating voltage, and we're going to start by placing one of our probes on phase A or line one main feed. We're then going to take our other probe and place it on what we believe to be phase A on the breaker. So if we have zero volts difference here, we know that this top pole is phase A. If it was any other phase, we would have a voltage difference, and in a panel like this, it would be roughly 208 volts. So here we have zero volts difference, here we have 208, and here we have 208. Once again, here we have zero, so we know that the top pole here is phase A. Moving on to phase B. Here we have 208 volt difference, here we have zero volts difference, and here we have 208. So we know that the middle pole here, or the second pole down, is phase B. Moving on to phase C. Here we have 208 volts difference, here we have 208 volts difference, and here we have zero volts difference. So we know that the third pole down is phase C. We're going to want to repeat this phase test for every line that we have CTs installed on. Once all the phasing is identified, we can go ahead and install our CTs. Starting at the mains, use an Allen key to loosen off the lugs. We're going to install CT1 on phase A or line 1, CT2 on phase B or line 2, and CT3 on phase C or line 3. Note that the direction arrow must point in towards the breakers as current flows in from the top of the panel down into the breakers. You can use adhesive mounting pads in combination with zip ties to hold the CTs firmly in place. So our CTs to meter the main load are now in place. If we wanted to meter a breaker load, a phase test would be required. To check the phasing of a panel that is not yet energized, you will have to rely on a continuity test. So first of all, you're going to want to isolate the panel from any transformers that might be up or downstream of the panel. You're going to temporarily turn the breaker to its on position and set your multimeter to check for continuity. You're then going to take one probe of your multimeter and place it on phase A or line one main feed. Take your other probe and place it on what you believe to be phase A on the breaker. If you have continuity, and as you can hear we do, we know that this is phase A. If it was any other phase, we would not have continuity. You're going to repeat that for phase B and phase C. If the panel is energized, then you can perform a voltage test. 
So you're going to set your multimeter to, to alternating voltage. You're going to once again take one probe, put it on phase A or line one main feed. Take your other probe and put it on what you believe to be phase A on the breaker. If this is phase A, there will be zero volts difference. If it was any other phase, you would have a voltage difference. With a panel like this, it would be roughly 240 volts volt difference line to line. You're going to repeat the process once again for phase B and phase C. Let's pretend for a second that we wanted to meter this three-pole breaker. Once again, you're going to repeat the phase test for the breaker intended and install the CTs accordingly. But just keep in mind that for CTs on breaker loads, the arrow must point away from the breaker as current flows out from the breaker towards the load. Unlike our mains that pointed in towards the breaker, our CTs on a breaker load must point away from the breaker. Now it's time to install our reference voltage. Now the reference voltage is used to both power the meter up as well as provide the meter with reference to the different voltage phases. Because we're using three-phase metering, a separate three-pole 15-amp breaker will be required for the reference voltage. Make sure to use colored wires specific to your local electrical code. In Canada, we use red for phase A or line one, black for phase B or line two, and blue for phase C or line three. And lastly, we use white for neutral. So we're going to terminate one end of the wires into the breaker and neutral block and run the four wires back to the meter. You can use adhesive mounting bases in combination with zip ties to cleanly dress your wires back to the meter enclosure. So now that our CTs are installed as well as our reference voltage, we are now safe to pull the wires across the panel, through the conduit, and into the meter enclosure. As you can see, we now have our CT leads and reference voltage wires pulled through the conduit into the enclosure. For the sake of this demonstration video, we've only pulled them through the one piece of conduit, but personally, I would suggest adding a second piece of conduit so that you can keep your CT leads and reference voltage wires separate. But for now, we're just going to use the one. So using a precision screwdriver, you're going to terminate the CT leads into their corresponding terminal strips. Here we use the bottom terminal strip for CTs 1, 2, and 3. So starting with CT1, we use black for negative and white for positive. As you go, you're going to want to double check your labels on your CT leads to ensure that each CT is being terminated into its correct slot. Now for the reference voltage, we use fork connectors. Loosen off the terminal screws, but be careful not to loosen them too much as they can easily fall out. And terminate your neutral line one, line two, and line three wires. Lastly, we're going to plug in our CT programming USB dongle. Once again, this tells the meter which type of CTs are being used with it. So now that everything is installed, it's time to discuss troubleshooting techniques using the three-line display. As you can see, the iMeter MF3 is now powered up and we have load information showing on the display. The display cycles through many different aspects of information, but from a troubleshooting standpoint, we are mainly concerned with the amperage and power factor. However, in order to perform this troubleshooting, you must first put load on the circuit, breaker, or feeds that you are metering. Any load above 1 amp per phase should suffice. So if all the information on the display looks normal, right away you can take a clamp on amp meter and compare the amperage on the live feeds to the amperage being displayed on the MF3 meter. You're going to start with the information for line one. Place your clamp on amp meter on phase A main feed or wherever else CT1 may be installed and see if the information on the iMeter MF3 display matches the amps on your clamp on meter. You're going to then repeat the process for line two with CT2 on phase B and line three with CT3 on phase C. If everything matches up, it's safe to say that everything is functioning and installed correctly. So here we have a negative power factor showing on line one. This indicates that there is a problem with the installation of CT1 or the reference voltage. You can start by making sure that the CT is not installed in a reverse direction. Remember that the arrow on the CT label must point in the same direction as current flow. The negative power factor can also be a result of the CT leads being reversed at the terminals inside the meter. Make sure that the black CT lead wire is in the negative terminal and the white CT lead wire is in the positive terminal. 
If everything just mentioned checks out, then there is most likely a problem with the reference voltage. You're going to repeat the phase test that was covered previously in this video and ensure that line 1 on your reference voltage is on phase A and that CT1 is installed on phase A as well. Document your findings and if needed, make corrections accordingly. All the same goes for line 2 for CT2 on phase B and line 3 for CT3 on phase C. At this point, the iMeter MF3 is fully installed and ready to use without the use of any automation. Instructions for adding automation will be covered in a separate video, but for now, the iMeter MF3 is ready to use for manual reads. Once again, I'm Sam Crawford. Thanks for tuning into our demonstration video, and we'll see you in the next one.